Hello and welcome to video 3 of our course on mobile data collection using the Kobo toolbox. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. In our last video, I presented you with the typical setup of both a paper-based and a mobile-based data collection system. I also showed you how to create your Kobo toolbox account. Hope you have one because you are going to be needing it in this video lesson. In this video, we are going to look at the different types of questions you can find in the Kobo Toolbox application. I will walk you through the 23 main question types, one after the other. I will also show you how to add skip logic patterns and validation criteria to your forms. Using a simple questionnaire which you can download from my website, you will be able to use the knowledge gained to create your first form. This video is followed by a quiz. I will advise you register for this course on my website to be able to access the quiz. The link to my website and other useful information is shared in the comment section below. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please click on the subscribe button below. That said, let's get to business. As mentioned in the introductory part of this video, there are 23 main question types that come with the Kobo Toolbox application. Remember this, you don't have to use all of them in your forms or projects. The general tendency when we learn something new is you want to use everything as a go, <laughs> something I'm guilty of myself. To look at each of the 23 questions, I figure out the easiest way is to create a project so that you create each question yourself and see how it works as we go. To get started, go to the Kobo website and type in your username and password. Then we click on new to create a new project. Click on build from scratch. The title of the project, let's call it the first project practice in the guide here here we have our first project as you can see the title of the project is my first project Let's now look at the questions one after the other while creating them. The first question we'll look at is the integer. It creates a question that takes an integer or a whole number input. Let me show you how to create this. To add a question, we click on the plus button. We type in our question and type in number of malaria cases. I click on add question and I go to number since my question is going to take an integer. I can add in a hint. So I'll tell the data collector, please input number of cases for this week. Then I click on save. And then I can preview my question by clicking on the I here. And as you can see, we now have our question. Number of malaria cases. And then there is a hint below. Please input number of cases for this week. And then I can type in my number of cases. This can only take integers. The next is a decimal question. It creates a question that takes a decimal as an input.
The range creates a question that takes inputs only within a certain range. Text creates a question that takes a free text response. Select one creates a multiple choice question where only one response can be selected. Select multiple creates a multiple choice question where multiple responses can be selected. Note displays a note on the screen and takes no input. Joe Point allows for the collection of a single GPS coordinate. Joe Trace records a line of two or more GPS coordinates. Joe Shape records a polygon of multiple GPS coordinates. The last point has to be the same as the first point. I find this particularly useful when mapping out a cluster or a small village. Date creates a question that takes a date input. Time creates a question that takes a time input.
date time creates a question that accepts a date and time input. Image creates a question that permits you to take a picture or upload an image file. Audio, video, and file function just in the same manner as image but for the fact that audio uploads an audio file video a video file and file any of the following file types text pdf excel word and word of view The barcode creates a question that allows you to scan the barcode and displays whatever the barcode represents as an input or response. The calculate question performs a calculation and displays the results as an input or a response. This question is not displayed during data collection, but will be displayed when looking at your table view in Kobo Toolbox or in the downloaded version. I have here two variables for boys and girls. Both variables are integers. I want to automatically have a total for boys and girls. So this is where calculation comes in handy. Don't worry about the code, we're going to see that when we go into the details of creating advanced forms. So if I now input 10 for boys and 15 for girls and submit, so I go back to my table, refresh to see the submission. Come to my project data and I go to tables. You now see the total for the calculation 25. Acknowledge creates a question with an acknowledge prompt that sets value to OK if selected. Rating creates a question that compares different items on a common scale. Ranking creates a question that compares a list of items to one another.
Finally, we have the question matrix. The question matrix creates a group of questions that display in a matrix format, where each cell within the matrix represents a separate question. When I preview my form, you realize that the variables are not displayed in the matrix format. That's okay, let me show you why. Close my form, I go to layouts, and if you realize the default setting is in single page, I will change this to grid team, save, and then if I preview my form again, there we go, we have our question displayed in a matrix format. So I can select the number of boys, two girls, yes, number of girls, three, and there we go. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please click on the subscribe button below.